Cradles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> yes, we are continuing with our rather epic uh, build of the, the Queen Elizabeth uh, battleship in 1 350th scale uh, in conjunction with the uh, YouTube channel of Drakinafell. So, let's have a recap of where we are. Uh, this is the hull, obviously. Um, so this is, the camouflage is done on the hull, uh, as it is on uh, the superstructure, so there's the, 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 the forward part of the superstructure, there is the, the middle part of the superstructure, and then the, the rear or aft part of the superstructure, so, so that's all got its camouflage on, uh, it's got most of the fiddly bits on, uh, but not all of them, but some of them we're going to have to wait until it's all together. Um, so that's those. Let's just put those back there for a second. Uh, the deck here is um, almost complete. That's the, the forward part of the deck. And there's the, the rear part or aft part of the deck, shall we say. Um, so these are pretty much done. Uh, obviously they're not on the hull yet, but we'll come to that. So basically, where do we need to go from here? Obviously we still need to do the major assembly. Uh, we've still got a few more fiddly bits to go, but they, they're going to kind of need to be done as we go along. Um, so I've been thinking about how to do this, because this isn't like any model I've built before. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put the uh, the drive shafts for the propellers and put the rudders on uh, so they'll go on because they need to be painted the same colour as the underside of the hull uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those, I'm not going to put the props on yet um, so I'm going to basically um, put those parts on I'm going to mask up the side uh, so I can do the lower half of the hull then we'll put the water line on it and then uh, we'll go from there but I think after that we'll probably put the decks on so let's get on with it okay so I've masked up the uh, basically the top of the water line and now I'm putting the uh, drivetrain on if you like. Um, now this is kind of tricky but because obviously everything is left and right handed so I've laid everything out uh, and cleaned up all the parts and, and everything so now I'm just gonna I'm just doing a bit of a, a sort of test fit to see how it goes. Uh, does that go on that way up or does it go that way up. Right, that goes like that. Okay. Right, so they go like that. Right, so that's that. Let's glue that on. Like that. Now this is where it starts getting tricky because this one doesn't have a, a pin to hold it in place and I think what I'm going to do is let's just double check the fit of this so that goes because I think what I might do is put this on first let's just see if that will work so that goes in there like that and then that goes through like that and then we can glue it in place yeah so I'll put this on first goes 
goes through there like that. That needs to go like that. Right. like that and then we'll just put a little drop there and the same on this one <laughs> right now we've got to put the rudder on this side so that goes like that put some glue on there and then we've got to try and get this straight and square before the glue dries. Ugh. This thing is monstrous. That is not even anywhere near straight. Right, just talk about yourselves for a minute because quite frankly getting this straight is more important than you seeing what I'm doing, <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> right, anyway, there it is, that's that's in the right place. So, okay, now we'll do the other side and then we can spray the bottom. Right, so there it is. With uh, both sides done. Like I said, I'm not gonna put the props on till right at the end. But uh, yeah, that was a little bit tricky, but not too bad. Um, I think the rudders are straight. It's quite difficult to tell, but there we go. Right, now we'll let that dry and then we'll um, paint the bottom half of the hull. Okay, I wanted to talk quickly about paint before we move on to painting the hull. So all of the uh, colour schemes that I looked at, including the one that came with the, uh, with the ship, with the model, uh, for the bottom of the hull, they call for uh, hull red. You can see that, hull red. Um, and it even, like for Tamir, it says XF9. Now, I didn't have any hull red, so I, I thought, well, I'll order some and see what it looks like. So I did, I got some uh, XF9. So this is hull red. And I just think that looks way too dark. It's like brown. Um, I mean, let me just pop the top open. I don't know what you'll be able to see inside it, but oh, probably not very well at all. Um, you'll probably be able to see in the cap easier. But that's, it's like a red brown. I mean, this would be a great base coat for a rust finish, but for a ship, eh, I wasn't quite so sure. So what I decided to do was I had uh, a half jar of XF7 flat red. And so what I've done is I've basically done, you can see on the lid there, it says plus XF9. Um, so I've basically taken half flat red and half hull red, and I've come up with this. So it's kind of, oh, that color. I don't know, oh, the light's not great, but I'm gonna put this on and we'll see what it looks like. And to be honest, if it doesn't look right, I can always spray over it again. So, but this is what I'm going to use. Right, so here it is. Uh, camera doesn't seem to be showing it all that well but it's uh yeah it's a much more of a sort of a reddish kind of brown than it was before the weird thing of it was it actually when i first sprayed it it came out like a really weird like lobster pink um which was very odd but uh i gave it a quick spritz of uh of varnish 
and it's gone to a much more the colour that it was meant to be. <laughs> so, I mean, it needs to be varnished anyway for when it's weathered. So that was uh, that was fine. Uh, it just meant bringing that stage forwards a touch. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is mask it again and put the um, waterline on. So I need to put a, basically a black stripe all the way around it. So I'll do that next. Right, so I've got all this all masked up now. Um, just masked off the bottom half of it as well. Uh, if you're interested, the blue, this blue tape is um, 3M vinyl tape. You can get this in various different widths. Um, it's basically the same as the Tamiya Flexible. It's, it's just a vinyl masking tape. It's actually really good. Um, you can get it on Amazon and stuff like that. There's a link uh, in the uh, description. Um, now, to spray the black line, I'm just going to use this uh, Humbrol rattle can, uh, just because it's easier than firing up the airbrush. Uh, so I'll do that, and then I'll unmask it, and we'll have a look and see what it looks like. Right, well, there we go. That doesn't look too bad, does it? I think that looks quite uh, ship shape and Bristol fashion, as the phrase goes. So, uh, yeah quite pleased with that and I quite like the way the colours come out as well it's not too uh, not too dark and yet not too kind of red either so yeah there's the other side as well just exactly the same as the first side to be honest so there we go so now what we need to do is I think we need to put the the decks on and we need to attach all of the fiddly bits to the sides of the hull so that's what we'll do next all right let's see if we can stick this on without doing anything horrendous so we'll start in these back corners Trouble is what you've got to be careful of is the deck's got a bit of a bow to it, so I'm trying to make sure I uh, keep it flat. just to keep it down like that and we'll leave this one to dry and then we'll put the front bit on afterwards okay now for the front part of the deck <laughs> things like a donkey's iron leg there's bows in here it's got more bows than an orchestra um, right let's make sure that's down properly that's okay so we'll do the same thing we'll basically start at the back and work our way forwards but I want to make sure this back is stuck down first because it's got quite a distinct bow to it You might uh, be asking yourself, am I going to put railings on this? And the answer to that is, no, I'm not. Um, 
because although there is you can get like photo etch you know like aftermarket sets for this of various different things um, you know railings and all the rest of it uh, we talked about it and basically this is an out of the box build we're not going going mad with like aftermarket components and whatnot all right let's just put that on there we'll put both of those on there like that all right now we can start working our way forwards but yeah we're not doing any um any sort of photo etch or anything like that other than what came in the box so if anybody wants to do that on their one then by all means but we're not doing it on this one Right, there we go. I'll leave that to dry and then move on from there. Right. Now for even more fiddly bits. We need to put a couple of anchors on. So I'm just going to put... It's really difficult to do this without... without knocking any of the other bits off. So I'm using this Revel contactor in, in for the anchors. Basically I think just because it will grab a bit better. And the way it works, um, there's a little, like, you see that? I don't know if you can see that little protrusion there, but that goes in the slot, in the hole, like that. I don't quite understand how these anchors are supposed to go because on the pictures they're like that. I think that's right. I might just double check that. Actually, it looks like they're supposed to be more. At a of a 45 degree angle but that puts it way up like that now I think I'll put it like that okay get the other one in there Right, nobody breathe. <laughs> okay, now we've got another couple of bits to go on. Oh, it's really difficult. This thing is so big. I'm trying to move it around without knocking anything off of it. Uh, <laughs> uh, now we want these pieces here I'll just put one of these on just so you can see because it, it's it takes longer to set the camera up and everything that it does to actually put the pieces in place so that goes in there and in oh Come on, get in there. That's it, like that. 
and then we'll put a little drop of glue on it. I'm going to put my finger on it like that to hold it while I do this because I do not want it to move and I don't want it to stick to the brush. There we go. Okay, now I just put that like that take my finger away because the last thing I want it to do is to wick down, touch my finger and end up sticking everything oh I've not looked sticking everything to my fingers. Alright. Uh, now I've got one more to put on this side and then two to put on the other side. Okay, so we're working our way towards the rear of the ship now and these parts that I'm about to put on are basically like reinforcing stays for the end of the catapult so you can see the catapult rail extends past the side of the ship and these parts basically reinforce it and these are going to be so much fun of course it doesn't help that I'm trying to do this uh, with the um, basically the camera between me and the model. But I think it's important because it's, it's kind of weird actually. I was thinking about this while I was doing this. I've noticed recently quite an odd phenomenon. Um, Firstly, that that actually went on a lot easier than I thought it was going to. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm sure a lot of you follow the same YouTube channels that I do. And I don't know if it's just me, but it seems like everyone's building boats at the moment. <laughs> it's just really odd. Um, but one thing I've noticed and this is not in any way meant as a disparaging comment about any of those other YouTubes because they are all fantastic modelers but one of the things that I've noticed is that a lot of the videos that you see of people building they don't show you this kind of thing they don't show you the fact that putting these parts on has taken me like to get these parts prepped, painted and finally fitted. Stay there you, don't you dare move. Has taken me the better part of half an hour just to do these few little bits, there's a couple of bits at the back as well. Um, and it's, uh, they never show you that. <laughs> and this is one of the reasons why a lot of these videos that I make are so long. Because basically what I want to try and do is show you guys that it isn't a five minute job. You know, to build a big ship like this is not a five minute job. But, uh, yeah, like I say, it's not in any way, uh, you know, meant as a disparagement to any of these other guys because they are amazing modelers and, quite frankly, they're better than me. Um, but it, it's a common thing I find on YouTube is that people have a tendency to, like, edit the crap out of things, if you'll pardon my French, um, that they'll... They'll basically edit things. That's weird, that can't be right. They'll, they'll basically just show you like a, almost like a highlight reel. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at this ladder because that does not look right to me. 
I'm just going to double check the plans. Back in a minute. Yeah, that's not right. Oh, this is going to be exciting. So I've just realised this casting is wrong. On the plans, it quite clearly shows the ladder like that, which is where you would expect it to be. But the hole on the deck, there's a little, I don't know if you can see that, there's like a little square peg on the bottom of the ladder, and that fits into that slot. And when you put it in that slot, the ladder is in the wrong place. And I must admit, when I put this on, I thought, surely this hole should be parallel to this face, and it isn't. Oh, bugger. Um, all right, how am I going to do this? Because basically, I've now got to fit a square peg into a square hole, if you see what I mean. But the square hole is facing the wrong way. Because it should be like that. Right, I think what I'm going to have to do is uh, just trim the bottom of this so that it fits in that hole. Um, just talk about yourselves for a minute while I do that. I'll have to do the one the other side as well. God, brilliant. Yeah, just talk about yourselves for a minute. <laughs> Okay, um, that actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So basically what I've done is, I'll just show you before I glue it in place. I've, I don't know if you can see that. I basically cut the, uh, the pin down. So instead of being square, it's now round. So I'm literally putting a round peg into a square hole. Um, but it does now mean that it, it fits in the right place like that. So, crisis averted. So let's just get that in the right spot and then we can put a bit of glue on it and then we can move on. I have to say, for all of the like the, the ill-fitting bits on this ship, I think that's the first one that I've seen that is kind of wrong. As in, like, completely wrong. Um... And I must admit, I've been kind of, as I mentioned, I've been kind of wondering about that. I kept looking at it and looking at it and looking at it as I was putting the rest of the, the ship together. And I just kept thinking to myself, you know, I was wondering how it was all going to go together. And, of course, the answer was, it wasn't going to go together. But it does now. There we go. Perfect. Right, onwards. <laughs> Whew. Uh, now for the back, um, let's try and think of the best way to show you this. Because like I say, the, the trouble is with this model is it's so big, um, it's difficult to manoeuvre it around. It's Anyway, um, let me move the camera a bit. Okay, right, that's a bit better. I'm still, I'm just going to, I'm going to keep knocking the camera with my hand now. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's just... Uh, but basically, these, these um, uh, what are they called, da uh, davits, I think. Um, but these go in these two sets of holes here. Um, so I'll try and put those on so you can see what I'm doing. But we'll just see how it goes. Let's get the glue somewhere a bit nearer so I can get to it. Uh, now, how am I going to do this? I think what I need to do... Let's get this. Oh. <laughs> People wonder why it takes a long time to build a model. And of course the other thing is I've got to do all this without knocking all that stuff off on the bottom. Ah, get in there. Stay. Yes, stay there. You stay right there, you little bit of plastic you ha success alright let's see if we have as much luck with the other one ok yeah. see if we can get a dog of glue on that and then 
push it into place. Oh God! <laughs> I'm, just, I'm really trying not to knock the camera, but it's difficult. Right, stay. That's it. I might have to touch up the paint on that a little bit. We'll wait until it's dried. Now, the other thing that needs to go on um, is it has another anchor. Right, uh, yes, there's a another anchor that goes here on the back. Um, so, I kind of wondered at first why it would have an anchor on the back. It seemed a bit weird. But then, of course, it occurred to me that, you know, something this big, having the anchors at the front is great, but it's it will swing around you know if you only pin it at one end then there's nothing to stop the back end of the of the ship from swinging around so obviously it has an anchor at the back as well to hold it in place so anyway um right let's put this on he says as if it was the easiest thing in the world all right and that needs to go in ah uh, in there like that a bit of this contactor it's just the fact that because this is a little bit thicker oh, there we go that's what we want um, it tends to grab a little better okay let's get that into place oh get in there Right, I'm gonna have to hold this for a minute or two till it sets up, so. But I hope this has given you another little indication of how long it's taking to, to put all these little bits on. Um, just putting these bits around the side of the deck, or the side of the hull, rather, has taken me well over an hour, and I'm not finished yet. So, anyway, I'll just hold this for a minute. Right, so that's got the, the rear anchor on. There is actually one other point. You can see there's a little hole above it. That's where uh, the rear sort of flagpole goes. But I'm not going to put that on until that's going to be the basically the last thing that goes on because I want to put the the flag on that before I put it on. So I'm going to leave that bit till last. So the next bit are going to be the vents. I, don't, I think they're vents anyway. Yeah, the vents that go around here. So I'm going to put those on now because I've got I've got all me all me vents here painted. So they're all the right colours. I've just got to figure out where they need to go. Um, right. So in case you hadn't, I don't know if I've shown you this before. Um, basically, what this is, it's a it's a coffee stirrer um, with a bit of masking tape taped to it, sticky side out. And when you're painting little things like this with that have flat backs, um, it's great because you can stick them to it and then spray them and they don't go pinging off everywhere. Yeah. And then you can also leave them on there until you're ready to uh, ready to do the rest of it. Right, I think I made a bit of a boo-boo somewhere when I was painting these. I did... Um, I did too many of one colour and not enough of the other, but it doesn't matter. I just quickly brush painted one just to get it get us back on track. So let's get these into place if we can. Ah, now this is going to be exciting. This is where we'll probably find out they don't fit in the holes. And indeed, they do not. Yay. Okay. They are a very, very snug fit. Alright, I'll just hold this and then do the next one. So again, talk amongst yourselves for a minute.
Okay, so I have got uh, those vents all on. Um, that was fairly straightforward after I trimmed them down slightly. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I think I'm going to start putting the superstructure on. So I think we'll start with this middle piece here. This actually didn't fit very well. What I've had to do is, because um, where it fits around these like boxes on the deck, like locating these, I've actually had to like bevel the insides to make it fit properly. Because and even then, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. So that needs to go on like that. And it does fit with a bit of brute force and ignorance. So we'll put some glue on there. Right, so that's that. Now we can do the forward part of the superstructure. And that goes on like that. I'm just, it's so difficult to move this thing without You've got to be so careful not to knock anything off. So this is the problem with this, is it's like the back of it is perfectly fine, but the front of it keeps trying to raise up slightly and it just leaves a slight gap. So it's a case of having to keep, um, you know, like holding certain pieces down to make it stick properly. like superstructure now this bit actually does go on fine it just plops straight into place which is kind of what you want so that works so we'll glue that on and this is where it's after this is where it's going to be a real nightmare to move around because you've not only got the um, all the little fiddly bits on the <laughs> on the sides of the hull and everything, but now you've got all these masts and whatnot poking off everywhere. So, yeah, this is going to be great. But it just means we've got to be super careful with it. Okay. Uh, so now I think we've got some more of these... Um, we've got a few more of these... Uh, vents to put on a couple of ladders I'll do that and then we can think about how we're going to weather this thing okay so I've put the main ship to one side for now because that's the main assembly is pretty much done what I'm going to do now is turn my attention to the uh, the boats and the turrets and start with the boats. So these are all the hulls of all the little boats uh, which have all had a spritz of grey primer. The boats are all in two or three pieces. So the bigger ones are in three pieces, the smaller ones are in two. So I've done all the hulls with grey primer. Uh, these are the two kind of decks of two of the larger of the launches. So they've all, they've been done. Uh, and I've also gone ahead and painted the tops of the boats uh, white and that was just with a, a Humbrol uh, rattle can um, so they'll just be white and I might actually go back in afterwards and just touch up the um, the glass work on a couple of them but we'll see um, I've also got the the Carly floats here um, they are basically the same color as the hull uh, it's, it looks like they were just painted you know whenever the ship was painted they painted these as well um, so they are going to need some kind of treatment, but I'm not quite sure what yet. So I'll leave those till last. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to paint these with some Citadel paints. And I've got here uh, a Doom Ball Brown, which I'm going to use for the hull because it's a nice kind of red brown. And then I'm, it, it may sound weird, but for the deck, I'm going to use this Kislev flesh because when you put a brown wash on it, it looks really good. It looks very woody. So we'll use those two. So let me get me wet palette and then we'll make a start. Right, there we go. Uh, I'll let these dry for a minute and then I'll do all the insides. Now I'll give these decks a quick lick over with this Kislev flesh. I think what I'm going to do, while I've got this open, I might give these Carly floats a little dry brush with this Kislev flesh, just very lightly. Yeah, I think that'll do. And if you think that looks a bit light, what I'm going to do afterwards is I'm going to... Um, tone it down with a, a wash it's just the inside of these floats uh, is like wooden slats and I just want to pick them up a little bit to give them a bit of definition and I think just for fun I'm going to do the um, the canvas shrouds on the main gun barrels with this as well Whether it would stay upright or not, I don't know, but it would float. Because it's, um, it's, uh, just hollow plastic, isn't it? Yellowy bits. The yellowy bits was the black, black. What these? Yeah, those. Gun barrels. Yeah, what barrels? Gun barrels for the main guns. For the what guns? The main armament, the main guns. Have you done the paint yet? No, I'll do those last. And there we go, that's those all done. And once they're dry, we'll give them a wash the same as the uh, the boat decks. Okay, so now that's all done, I'm going to use some of this Reichland Flesh Shade on the light brown bits. This is a really good wash for light brown if you want something a little bit subtle. Right, so here are our decks. So we'll just get some of this on the brush. That's pretty good, isn't it? And so I'm going to do the uh, 
the gun jackets as well. Too much on there. I've got enough on there to do about four of them. Uh, let's get another one. There we go, that's more like it. And then we'll let those dry. Okay, and while the rest of that's drying, we can put a couple of these boats together. So, we'll do the two big ones. in the bottom of there like that the top goes on like that you see give that a little double glue there we go and I don't know if you can see, probably won't be able to see it very well on the camera but you can see the deck boards through the, uh, that's why I had to paint the inside of them all, you see, because you can see through them. Uh, right, I'll put the rest of these together and then we'll see where we are. Right, so here's all our little boats done um, and the Carly floats. I gave them a, 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 a black wash. Uh, actually, I don't know if you can see those. Uh, there you go. Um, but I gave those a black wash just to uh, finish them off so they're looking good. So they can go on. Uh, the boats, I'm not putting those on yet because I want to give those, uh, they're going to actually go on last uh, because they need to be uh, gloss varnished, whereas the rest of the ship will be a matte finish. So those will go on last of all. Okay, so I'm just um, going to put the guns on the turrets, the main guns, and I'm just sorting them out into left and right hand. And then I've got to sort them out by colour because they're actually different coloured barrels on different turrets, which is useful. Uh, right, that's right hand. Uh, that's left. Light and a mid. And then the rear turret, which is a Y turret, should have a dark grey and a, a medium grey so that's it that's right i thought i got that wrong for a minute there <laughs> that's right so these guns need to go on these turrets in this order so i'll put those on and we'll go from there so let's start with a turret i've got a sneaking suspicion i bet you only really like these guns won't fit properly i might have to trim these down a touch because I think they're going to be a very snug fit now they've been painted. Ugh. That looks a bit bow-legged to me. I think they need to, they need to be trimmed slightly to fit. That one's straight. That one isn't. But this is what I'm saying about, it. it's like, even that, you know, the guns are just boss-eyed. Uh, all right, let me spend some time fitting these guns and then we'll see what they look like when they're on. Right, well, that was interesting. Just had a hurricane fly over outside. I was sitting here, just, just I'd actually just finished putting the last gun on and, um, I heard a very familiar sound. I thought that sounds very much like a, a Merlin. And uh, it stuck me head out the door and sure enough, there's a hurricane just flew over. So anyway, there you go. Uh, so the turrets are, the guns are on. Uh, they did take a bit of finagling to get them into place. The interesting thing is, in each case, the, uh, the port side gun was fine. Um, just went straight on, no problem at all. And the starboard side gun, in each case, was cocked about 15 degrees off of straight. And so I've had to basically do some surgery on the end of them to make them fit straight. Um, but they're on now, so that's that. But it's kind of odd. Uh, I suppose all the turrets are basically the same moulding, so it's eh, understandable to an extent. But 
it's uh, yeah I mean again it's just one of these things it's like did anyone actually build one of these before they shipped it or did they just say yeah that's near enough anyway that's beside the point so uh, where are we now uh, so we've got all our little boats done we've got the turrets done uh, we've got to put the Carly floats on the ship and once we've done that uh, what we need to do then is give everything a coat of gloss varnish so that we can um, start weathering it so I'll leave the turrets, the main turrets and the secondary turrets off for now because um, they can be done on their own but I'll basically, I'll fit the Carly floats to the ship where they need to go and then I will give everything a coat of, or a couple of coats of gloss varnish. So what I'll do is I'll go and do all that because I, I need to spray it outside anyway. Um, and I'll bring it back once the varnish has dried. <sighs> I mean, we're getting there. We're not far off now, really. Yeah, onwards. Okay, uh, I've covered everything in uh, a couple of coats of varnish now. And we're going to start with our weathering. Now, what I'm going to do first of all, the weathering is going to be fairly simple. It doesn't need a massive amount because basically because of the scale of the thing. But the main thing I want to do is get some streaking on here. I've had a look at some of the pictures of these things and they were pretty grotty. So I'll, I'll start with um, one of the turrets because I think that's probably the easiest thing to handle. And I've got here some uh, panel line. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give the thing a wash, like a, a black wash. Uh, particularly, obviously, things like, uh, you know, the detail, the guns. These um, turrets do have, like, rivets and things on them. So we'll give that some, but basically I want to go over most of the most of the model, uh, and especially even the sides and things like this. Even though there's there may not be much in the way of detail on these sides, I still want to cover the sides because what we're going to do once this dries is we're going to do some streaking on it. So this is to sort of help pick out some highlights, but it's mainly to provide some streaking effects later. So we'll just go over the whole thing. I might actually put some of this into a slightly larger container and use a different brush, because I think trying to do the whole thing with this is gonna take forever, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I definitely think I'm gonna have to um, decant this into something else because <laughs> this is just taking forever doing it with this little tiny brush I'll do this one and then for the other ones I'll do uh, I'll use a different brush try and so it doesn't take a week to to do each one okay now this is kind of tricky but I'm trying to show you what I'm doing basically what I'm trying to do is get the uh, the portholes done so what I'm doing is giving them a oh a good drop of this uh, panel line accent basically filling up the porthole like that I hope you can see that and the idea is that this will dry and when it dries it will shrink but I'm hoping it will leave, at least if it's not completely black, it will make it heavily shaded. Okay, now the next step uh, is another wash. This is, um, oh, oh, we can see that. This is an AK Interactive enamel wash. So it's basically the same as uh, the panel line accents that I normally use. Um, I bought this a long time ago because I couldn't get any brown uh, of the Tamiya, you know, like the light brown. So I bought this instead. I've never really used it since. Uh, but I'm going to use this to basically do the decks and various other bits. So let's see how well this works. Right, so we'll put this on. And like I said, I don't really want it too dark. Um, I just want it to, you know, basically show us the floorboards, as it were, 
or the deck boards. So I'll go over the whole deck with this and then um, I might go over some other areas as well just to provide some streaking and grime effects later. So I'll do the rest of this and then we'll come back and I'll show you uh, what it looks like. Okay, so now what I want to do is uh, start taking off this uh, panel line and basically starting to streak this. So I've just got a little fan brush here, um, but basically whatever brush you need that, that will do the job. And I've got a little pot of, uh, of white spirit, just cheap stuff, and I'm just going to just dampen the brush with the white spirit and just and you can see I'm just I'm basically just barely touching the uh, the, the surface I mean we're gonna have to take quite a lot of this off but you can see the brush has gone into kind of points um, so, the, but the trick here is to uh, is to keep the brush clean as much as possible to avoid any like build up of uh, of the wash on the brush. We want to try and get rid of it, not just smear it about. But you can basically use whatever brush you need. I mean, it's like I say, I'll, I'll use this one, but I've got some other brushes that I'll use, like flats and points and basically whatever whatever I need to um, to get the, uh, get the effect that I want. See, I think for these barrels, I probably want to use a, a bigger brush or a flatter brush. Uh, let's use this one. But what I'm doing on the top here, because the, the top of the turret is kind of domed, I'm basically going from the middle and working my way outwards like it's like rained on it and uh, it's like run off to either side. And I'm going to take most of this off. I don't want it to be absolutely filthy. I just want it to be a bit grimy. because obviously they would at least try and keep it clean. Swab the decks and whatnot, but there we go. Okay, I think that will do for that one. We'll let that dry, see what it looks like. There we go, that's more like it. All right, let's do the rest of it. Okay, now for the fun bit, cleaning the deck. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. I mean, it's basically whatever works is, is <laughs> the ideal. So you can use, uh, you know, like a brush like this and just uh, gently go over it like that. You have to just keep cleaning the brush. Um, what you can also use, which is quite handy for large areas like this, uh, are these um, oh. these are uh, eyeshadow applicators uh, you get them from the pound shop and uh, it's basically a little oh, let me get one out and show you it's uh, basically a little sponge on a stick and uh, they're quite quite good for this kind of thing so get some white spirit on it dab most of it off and then just wipe across the deck like that and that brings it off quite that gets it off quite nicely so and because it's a, a sponge it doesn't um, doesn't sink too much into the into the sort of you know it's not like the bristles of the brush that can get in there and lift it all out this is actually a little bit uh, flatter as it were so I'll get on and do the deck and then we'll come back and I'll show you what we're going to do with the with the hull and the sides of the superstructure and all the rest of it. OK, 
okay for the sides uh, it's going to be a bit difficult to do this because it's just again trying to get it under the camera so you can see it um, but basically it's a case of kind of wetting down the uh, the dried wash like that and then what I'm doing is going in with back to the fan brush and this time keeping the brush fairly wet just streaking it down the sides like that I don't know whether you can see that but That's a bit better. And just again, just barely touching the sides, but just streaking it down the sides like that. You see? So I'll carry on with the rest of this, and then again we'll have a look at it when it's all done. And one of the final touches for the hull is this uh, cadmium orange hue, um, which is. Uh, Taylor Rowney and what I'm going to do is just put a few little spots of this for rust uh, mainly around the um, the anchors so just get a little tiny bit on the brush like that and then just Like that only needs a little bit and then we again take a brush with a little bit of white spirit on and just like that and again I'm I'm barely touching the surface like that you see and it's just to give it a bit of rust where the chains have been going through the whatever those holes are. <laughs> I don't know what they're called <laughs> and I'll do uh, the anchors on the other side and the one on the back uh, so <clears throat> decals next thing there's only a few for this uh, most of them go on the aircraft there's only these two or one of these that goes on the uh, on the ship on the back the Union Jack and uh, they give you two, uh, a straight one and then a curved one that's supposed to look like it's flapping in the breeze. And I thought I might try something a bit different with this. So it's something that's, the, uh, the older modelers of you will be familiar with this, uh, younger people might not be. Um, but it's basically how to make a curved flag. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, I've actually managed to find in my spares box because this is the this is the flagpole. Uh, I managed to find something that's almost identical. Uh, it's pretty much the same length, um, fits in the hole, so that's fine. Stop laughing at the back. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make two flags. So one of them will just have the the curvy flag on. The other one will have the straight flag, but we're going to try and make it curved. And to do that, I'm going to use this. Now, what on earth is that? I hear you cry. Well, actually, it's a piece of metal. And back in the day, uh, especially amongst like the war gaming fraternity and whatnot, uh, you had this thing where if you wanted to make banners and pennants and all that kind of stuff, it was uh, the, the the advice of the day was to use um, thin metal. And the source of this metal was at the time toothpaste tubes because they were made of metal nowadays of course they're made of plastic which most of the time isn't recyclable but don't get me started on that uh, however there are certain things that are still made of metal today such as this one which came from garlic puree so this was a tube of garlic puree that I when it was finished I just cut the bottom and the top off uh, opened it up washed it out and there's a nice piece of uh, metal for us to use um, tomato puree is another good one as well so anyway, what I've got is a piece of metal that I've cut to the appropriate size of the flag. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend it into shape and then I'm going to try and put the decal on it. Now, back in the day, the real sort of pros would actually paint the flags, but I'm not really up to that. So uh, we're going to try it this way. Um, so, yeah. So what I've got to do is I just want to bend. I want to... Uh, Let's get a pair of tweezers because what I want to do is I want to try and keep one end of it uh, straight, like where it goes onto the flagpole, just for a bit. I want to keep that straight. So what we're going to do is just put like a nice simple kind of double bend in it, just like that. There you go. You see, so it's not a lot, just a little bit, with a little straight bit on the end there. And now what I'll do is I'll cut this out and I'm going to cut it. I don't know if I can actually show you this or not. Uh, let's see if I can get it to catch the light properly. There we go. If you look at the edges of this, um, it has quite a large seam, if you like, around the edge. So I'm going to cut that off so it's exactly the right size. And I'll do the same with this one as well. So I'll trim these up and then we'll um, try and fit them and see what happens. Right, well, here are our two flags. I've given them a, a quick spritz of uh, matte varnish. Um, so this is the one that was just the decal, and this is the one with the um, the metal in it. And I, I've given it a few extra little bends just to make it a bit more blowy. Um, but interesting enough, when I sprayed this one with the varnish, um, it's actually kind of curled. You know, obviously, the varnish must have shrunk slightly as it's dry, and it's kind of pulled it around a little bit. Um, so it's actually come out better than I thought it was going to. So I, I, the trouble is now is I can't decide which one uh, to put on the ship. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to leave not put one on yet, and I'm going to take both of them with me when I deliver the ship. And uh, Drakenefell can make his mind up which one he wants. <laughs> we'll go from there. That seems like the easiest way. Uh, anyway, onwards. Right, so uh, I did get a bit carried away and I did a bit more than I intended to. <laughs> so um, I finished off the weathering. I've also uh, given the whole thing a coat of uh, matte varnish um, just to sort of seal everything up. Uh, I've also added the uh, one of the aircraft, one of the walruses. Um, I modified that to have the wings folded and I've also added the... Um, the cradles for the catapults. Uh, the cranes are not on there yet, so but that will go on later. Um, but uh, yeah, so I did that, uh, and like I say, I've, I've basically finished off the weathering. So the hull, we're, we're almost done now. Actually, there's not really a lot more to do. Um, pretty much one of the last things I'm going to do before I put all the boats and everything on. Um, is I'm going to do a little bit of rigging. Um, it's, it's more of one of these things that I'm doing it because I just think it looks a bit odd with no rigging at all. So I'm not going to do a full rigging set because it's it's um, it's very difficult to find decent reference pictures of where the rigging goes. Come on, as a kind of um, to give it so there's so it's not just bare masts. That's the main thing. Uh, and then once I've done that, uh, we'll put all the uh, the guns, the boats, and everything else on the cranes, and I think that will be us done. Now I'm going to do the rigging uh, basically off camera because there isn't really a way for me to film it because I need to get right in close to it to see what I'm doing. Um, but basically, I'm going to be using uh, this, uh, which is um, Mig. Uh, it's basically rigging elastic it's it's uh but it's very fine and it's black so i should be using this simply because i have it um normally i would use like prim knitting and elastic but that's probably a little bit thick for this at this scale um so i have already used some of that rigging material i don't know if you can actually see it or not but i have actually done the rigging on the uh on the walruses so they have a little bit of rigging and again it's it's just really to give an idea of the rigging um, 
and and believe me rigging a, a one 350 scale aircraft is not fun um but i'll do that and then we'll come back and we'll have a a look at what it looks like and then we'll put all the other bits on and then i think we'll be done so talk much sales for a minute So this is the rigging all done now. Um, it's uh, it's come out all right actually. I, I I quite like it. As I said, I didn't go mad with it. I just wanted to do a little bit just to. Uh, I just think it looked a bit weird with no rigging, and I think this now is just enough just to make it look a bit, make it look the part sort of thing. So uh, now we can. We're almost done now. There's just a few little bits left to do. So let's go on with that. Right, so I think what we need to do now is kind of work from the middle outwards. So we need to, we'll put the boats on next. Uh, then we'll put the secondary armament on. And then we'll put the cranes on. Then we'll put the main turrets on. Oh, and the anti-aircraft mounts. And I think that'll be us done. So let's start with the boat. Oh, I've got to put the uh, props on as well. I mustn't forget, <laughs> mustn't forget to put those on because otherwise we will be in trouble. Um, right, so here are most of our remaining parts. Right, so we'll just put a little bit of glue there and there. We don't want tons of the stuff. So that goes on There like that. There like that. That goes there. There like that. Oh no, that dropped right in place. <laughs> uh, goes there like that. I'm not going to glue these in. I'm just going to put these in so that they can actually be rotated. So that goes in there like that. And that is two. Like that. And again, I'm not going to glue these in. I'm just going to put them in so that they can actually be moved. That's two, and we'll just put those facing backwards for a minute so we don't end up knocking the barrels off. Right, and then we want the crane. Now the crane on this side has a bit of a a bit of a thing going on. <laughs> and then in comes our crane, and this one has a plane hanging off of it. So that goes in there like that. And I'll just hold this for a second. And then I'll swip it, swip it, flip it around, and we'll do the other side. So that turret goes on there like that. That goes like that. Right, this might be a bit awkward for you to see, but I'm just going to put the props on. I'll try and put the props on anyway. One. All right, that's two. Yes, after much wailing and gnashing of teeth and uh, long days and lots of bits and pieces, uh, we can now finally put on the A turret, like that. I'll try and make sure it's facing forward. Now again, I'm not gluing these in so they can actually be traversed, should it be desired. And finally, after all this time, the crowning piece, bringing this build to an end, or, well, just about to an end, is the B turret. I'll just pop that in there, like, that 
And that is this thing finished. So I think we can uh, we can wrap up this video now. <laughs> And here is our finished article after uh, many a long hour of building. Um, I think this has come out rather well. I'm quite pleased with this. Um, it was, as I've mentioned several times, the first time I've built a boat like this, ship, sorry. And uh, I think it's worked out very well. Um, the planes on the crane was my daughter's idea. <laughs> she, when I told her that's what the crane was for, she said, "Well, you know, are you going to hang one of the one of the aircraft off of the crane?" And I kind of had to after that. Uh, the other one I modified, as you can see, to have the wings folded as if it was just being pushed into the hangar, uh, which I thought was a nice little touch. I did also add some rigging, not a massive amount, but just enough to uh, to kind of not have the mast bare because it looked a bit weird. I thought. Um, but on the whole, I'm very pleased with how this come out, and uh, I'm I'm happy to say that uh, I have actually already delivered this uh, this uh, model to uh, Jack Innerfell, and he's very pleased with it as well, which is the most important thing. And uh, as a little um, extra bonus, I've also made a little uh, water-based diorama <laughs> for this, which uh, I'm sure you weren't expecting. Um, but uh, I thought it was a bit more interesting than just having it on the stand itself. And one of the nice things about this diorama is that you can actually remove the ship from it uh, and display it on its regular display base, depending on how you want to uh, display it. So you'll see how I made that in an upcoming video. Uh, but I think for this particular project, this build, I think we're we're pretty much done here. So hopefully you've enjoyed this series of videos. Um, hopefully it's been of interest to some of you. It's certainly been, uh, you know, as I mentioned right at the beginning, m many firsts for me. Um, so uh, thank you to everyone who stuck with it right through to the end. And I believe that later this week, uh, Drakenafel is going to be uh, doing his own video on this model. Uh, so you can look forward to that on his channel. Um, hopefully we'll be doing more collaborations in the future. We've certainly talked about a few different bits and pieces. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for sticking with me through this bear moth of a build. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers. Bye.